Residents of the Northern Rivers understand that our climate is shifting. In the future, wet months will be wetter, drier months will be drier, there'll be an increased risk of severe storms and weather events that lead to disturbances like fire. We know that this is happening, we're already seeing it in our local catchment and so we must adapt. And we have a role in supporting our local ecosystems as well as our local communities to adapt to this shifting climate. And we've got tools in our kit that can have multiple benefits for all. One of those tools is biobridges. Bundjalung plans were rainforest people. So you've got to imagine that's an area of the rainforest, heavily forested, and also little buffer zones and the open, those open areas, open connected areas which were used by men and animals alike. I want to say Gala, Garima, Chagan, Gala. Gala at the end is here, here. Garima is kind of look after, care. So it's, yeah, I would say look after this country, please, Bugle Bear, please, thank you. We should be very strong in trying to preserve the habitats that we've got already. Like from this day forward, from this moment onwards, not letting one habitat get destroyed. So like bio is biological, everything. Just, it's nature. It's sort of a scientific way of summing up nature. And then the bridge bit, it's, you, it's like a natural bridge area between a, a suitable place to live to another suitable place to live. A biobridge is an area of connecting vegetation that acts like a bridge for plants and animals to move, to find shelter, to find mates, to escape the impacts of climate change. Whether you're a farmer, a community member, a landholder, a renter, or just wanting to get out there and get involved in your community, there's lots of different ways that you can participate in landscape restoration and in supporting biobridges. So what was the big scrub? It was a, the largest tract of subtropical rainforest in Australia. It went from 75,000 hectares in a very short period of time through clearing for land settlement down to less than 1% of that extent scattered throughout small remnants over the Austinville and Lismore Plateau. It's now listed as critically endangered. There's many people in this community who have worked um, tirelessly to try and restore the remnants of rainforest that we have left and also expand that rainforest into the rest of the landscape where it once was. Overall, I've planted a lot of trees. I'm up to, I just passed 165,000 actually that I've planted. I just do what I can and I love doing it. It's been other people have come, kids camps have come and that's really rewarding with kids come and plant trees. I've got a row of honour I call it, that people that help me, I get them to plant a tree in a row and that's their tree. So that's just one more way of encouraging people, I think, to plant trees because, in my mind, it's extremely important to plant trees. It's one of the best things you can do to try and save our world. I've shown quite a few people how I do it. My way suits me and somebody else's way might suit them, but overall, we're all aiming for the same end, to get trees in the ground to restore our world. I think with a bit more encouragement a lot more people would plant trees. So that's why I get great enjoyment out of people coming and putting trees in the ground, showing that it's so easy, so rewarding. And when they come back and look and they I can say there's the trees you planted. And they get big ground bug eyes when they look at them. Happiness. It's extremely nice. It's good for your soul. And it just makes you happy. And something that just makes you happy is pretty good stuff. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a totally intact corridor. It's 
it's really good to think about where are the big habitat patches, how can you expand on them, and then where are the ones nearby, and how can you just, you might not be able to make a whole corridor as such of vegetation, but you can put in stepping, what we call stepping stones, which are clumps of trees throughout your land. That can mean that species will move between those. It's safe for them to move. They may be really reluctant to move over a cleared patch of land because there may be a, a species that prefers to be in a forest. Remnants provide disproportionate benefits. So if you have a piece of remnant vegetation on your block or even a hollow bearing paddock tree, start from that. That's the gold. If we can build from there, build buffers around existing vegetation, we can massively improve the potential of those corridors to form effective biobridges. To improve connectivity, you think about riparian areas. What we mean by riparian is the edges along wetlands, creeks, rivers. We get a lot of birds traveling through there, a lot of insects, a lot of other invertebrate species such as spiders, etc., living there. Um, a lot of plants living there and if we can restore and maintain them in a largely native vegetated state we're going to have good connectivity from the ranges right through the floodplain down to the coastline. And maybe you're sitting at home wondering how can I actually get started on my block? Maybe you're isolated from other pieces of vegetation but we know that it's the overall value of the habitat, the overall net amount that makes the most difference. So we've all got to start from somewhere. Even if you just plant 10 trees down by the creek this year, plant another 10 next year. And over time, by lots of people making small scale actions, we can make a huge difference as a community. More and more science is coming out to show that connected communities are resilient communities. And the more connections that we have within our community, the more resilient we'll be in the face of a changing climate. So work with your neighbours. Have a chat, see what's going on on their place. Do they have a vegetated fence line that could potentially be connected to your dam? By working together, we can massively improve our impact, both in terms of our social connections and in terms of our environment. Eventually, those sorts of local scale biobridges or connections will connect to sub-regional corridors, which will connect to regional corridors, which will connect to the continental corridors that we need to preserve our species into the future.